Good morning and welcome to our Daily Word and Prayer. My name is Tom Short. So glad to have you along with us on this Saturday morning where we like to talk about something contemporarily happening in our culture if we can. There is so much going on in our culture, so much related to Christianity. And today I want to talk about even what is cultural Christianity. Richard Dawkins is in the news this past week. If you don't know who Richard Dawkins is, he's perhaps the world's most famous atheist. In the early 2000s, he wrote a book called The God Delusion, which was one of the leading books of what is known as the New Atheist. Now, the New Atheists just used the old atheist arguments, but what they did was they, the old atheists had this live and let live attitude. They thought Christianity, they might not agree with it, they might not like it, they not believe, might not believe in God, but they thought, you know, if you want to be a Christian, that's okay, because, you know, Christians are by and large, decent, respectful people. And by and large, they were treating atheists nicely. And then along came Richard Dawkins and some of the what's known as the four horsemen of the new atheism. He was one of them, perhaps the leader of the most famous of them. And his book, and, and his book The God Delusion. And what they taught, they were aggressively atheist. They went from a live and let live attitude to a Christianity is bad, it hinders progress, it's got to be stopped, it's got to be opposed. They spoke against teaching children to believe in God, teaching children to believe that God created us. They demanded evolution be taught to all kids and that creation be mocked and ridiculed. They were aggressive. And in the early 2000s, this was really showing up on the campus where I, where I would face this new atheism in a where there's a tremendous vitriol towards Christianity. Much of that has subsided, I think, for a couple of reasons. Number one, one of the, you know, Christopher Hitchens, one of their four horsemen, died. Number two, Richard Dawkins, in a lot of ways, was discredited by his own moral life and some of the public decisions, statements, and activities he was involved in. Thirdly, um, uh, it was just mean-spirited. And there's still some who, who maintain that and some who go on to that. But by and large, I don't know if you realize this, but in our culture at large, in our universities where this was the most, uh, uh, the, the, this conflict was the most pronounced, by and large, the atheists have won. By and large, in the, in the world of academia, in what's taught in the university, Christianity is tolerated, but, but by and large, atheism, secularism, secularism has won and when they win i think sometimes there's an intolerance but sometimes there's a sense we will put up with them because no one's listening to them anyway well richard dawkins created quite a stir this past week when he lamented the decline of cultural christianity he made it clear he said i'm not a believer but i but he was bothered by the decline in cultural Christianity. By the way, excuse me, one other thing. I do want to show one comment by Dawkins and, and his, uh, if I could step back a minute. As I was researching him some this morning, I just ran across a quote on his website that I thought was worth mentioning, although it's a little bit of a rabbit trail, excuse me. He said, uh, if you can read this, thank you, teacher, so runs the famous favorite t-shirt slogan. The book inspire, this book inspires me to coin a variant. If you understand why you exist and rejoice in that understanding, thank a science teacher. More specifically, thank a teacher of evolution. I just had to comment. Again, this kind of reveals some of his vitriol towards Christianity. First of all, I want to say, when I see the bumper sticker, if you can read this, thank a teacher. Yeah, sure, but I like, if you can read this, thank your mother. Probably most of us learn to read from our mother. Now, you might have learned some of the bigger words from a teacher, but you learn to read from your parents most likely. And if you can read or thank a parent first and foremost. But do, look at what he gets at here. If you, if, you want, if you are wondering about why you exist, what is your purpose? If you can be happy that you exist, give the credit to what? Evolution. Thank a science teacher and, th and evolution. This reveals, again, that new atheism attack on creation, attack on God, attack on faith. 
we remember, remember we talked recently about creation and we talked about how important it is because Romans 1.20 tells us that the creation is the evidence of God. And those who have rejected God have come have this theory of evolution that tells us it all came about by chance. And I marvel again at a guy like Richard Dawkins because in his statements here about being a cultural Christian, he talks about the beauty of Christianity, the beautiful cathedrals, the beautiful Christmas carols, the beautiful hymns, the, the culture that Christianity has given. He's for, he lives in Great Britain. The culture, and he says we're a Christian nation culturally, and he appreciates that, he likes that, he wants to maintain that, wants to preserve it because there's something beautiful, something wonderful about it. And yet he, he, on the other hand, he speaks out of the other side of his mouth by being such a vicious attacker of those who, of, of what gave us all that. Christi here's the point, my friends, and people need to realize this. Jesus said that you are the salt of the earth. You and I are the salt of the earth. And the salt gives taste and it brings beauty. Christianity, the Christian faith, its primary purpose is to reconcile an individual to, to God through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. We are to repent and believe the gospel, and we come into this relationship with God through Jesus. But listen, it does not stop there. Christianity, a faith in Jesus Christ, transforms individuals, and as more and more people are one to Christ, we transform a culture. We transform a world. We transform the world in which we live. We bring to it things that God always intended when he created the world way back in Genesis. Despite what Richard Dawkins thinks, yes, God created the world. And God made it a beautiful place. And something has destroyed the world. It's called sin. It's a rebellion against God. It turned everything topsy-turvy. It took the beautiful things God intended and it made them ugly. It, it brought death into the world. It brought confusion into the world. It brought things that, that, that natural that, was, that we don't like. And where people come to Christ, and where lots of people come to Christ, they transform a culture. They transform a society. They bring beauty back in. They bring order back in. They bring life back in. Remember, those who hate God, those who go astray from God, it says in Proverbs, they love death. But Jesus came, and, and, excuse me, and the enemy came to steal, kill, and destroy. When we leave God, we are on a path of destruction, a path of death. But Jesus said he came to give life and give life abundantly. And indeed, when that happens, and when people come to this faith in Christ, there is a beauty there is something wonderful. There's something that, that you and I are to be bringing into our world and into our culture. We are the salt of the earth. We are the light of the world. We are to bring love and beauty and joy and peace into our world. And people around us ought to feel that and experience that. If, if people come in, visit in your home, they ought to sense peace. They ought to sense love. They ought to sense warmth. We ought to be making our homes like this. Uh, we ought to be making our churches like this. When they come into your church, they ought to experience life and joy and peace and kindness and goodness. These things should be there, and it should be real, not just a smile for Sunday morning. It should be real. We should be being transformed, and we are the salt of the earth. I'm glad Richard Dawkins sees that and appreciates that. He didn't want to believe. He didn't want to go to what creates this. He just wanted the benefit of it. And this is the, this is, humanity's like this. They want what God offers. They don't want God's path to get there. Repentance, humility, faith in Jesus Christ. Die to self so that you can truly live. The, I'm convinced that when we think of the fruit of the Spirit, that's what people want. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, Galatians 5, and 23. They want that. 
but they think they can get it without Jesus. They think they can get it without God. They think they can get it without turning to God, without repentance and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, Richard Dawkins wants all that Christianity offers without being a Christian. And I and uh, it's kind of a selfish thing. We will offer to him as best he, we can. We want him to experience the love of God. We want everyone to experience the love of God. And yes, we, as, and it, to me, this is a clarion call for Christians to rise up, to be the salt of the earth, to make sure, as it says here, that we do not lose our saltiness. Let's continue reading. You're the salt of the earth. But if the salt has become tasteless, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. What strikes me is Richard Dawkins led the charge to trample Christians underfoot in the academic world of, the West, of Western culture in the last 20, 25, 30 years. He's trampled us underfoot, and yet I think he wants, well, but they offered such beautiful things. I don't know that he's regretting it. I don't know. I'll tell you what he is regretting. The interview, what's been lost in this interview, what hasn't been spoken about as much as maybe it should be, is he was lamenting not only the decline of Christianity in Great Britain, but the rise of Islam and Ramadan being celebrated, and, and the, in the streets of London, there were no decorations, there may have been somewhere, but these whole neighborhoods, no decorations, anything related to Easter, but lights for Ramadan and for the Islamic uh, month of Ramadan was all over England. And I think he may lament seeing these large demonstrations of Muslims in London, which has become uh, very much you know, one of our largest, most influential cities in the world, it's become a kind of a Muslim-dominated city. And this is what he's lamenting. And I think he's right. My friends, when Christians lose their saltiness, we become tasteless, there's a vacuum. When we step out of the public square, when we step out of influencing others, when our churches lose influence, when we begin to live like the world because we've lost our, our, we become tasteless, we've lost our saltiness. When we begin to just live like the world, uh, something fills the vacuum. In Great Britain, what's filled it is Islam. What is filling it is Islam. They went for secularism, but people believe in God, and they want to believe in God and need to believe in God. It's hardwired into us. There is a God, and if you reject the Christian faith, and if the attacks on the Christian faith succeed, like Dawkins' attacks, well, they'll fill the vacuum with something else, and it seems like what's filling that vacuum could be Islam in Europe. Might it not happen there? Might it not happen here? We believe in the truth found in Jesus Christ. Christianity is a beautiful religion. Not every religion is. You know, it was Karl Marx who said religion is the opiate of the people. And in, tru tru in truth, religion can be very oppressive. This is what Dawkins was decrying, how Islam in its holy book speaks of women and speaks of, of um, non-Muslims. And he was decrying that and hoping that is England never becomes that. On this we can agree. But the answer is Jesus. The answer is turning. People need to find the true God or they'll find some other one. Amen? Let's pray about this. Father, we thank you that you have made us as believers the salt of the earth and the light of the, the, light of the world and the salt of the earth. I pray that we would not hide our light under a bushel. I pray we would not lose our taste as the salty ones. I pray, Father, that you would give us a, a, an ability by your Holy Spirit to walk in joy in peace, in love, in such a way that it is noticeable that where we go, we bring a spirit of peace, a spirit of joy, a spirit of life. Jesus, you came to give us life. I pray we'd always exhibit that. When we leave our house and when we're in our house, help us, O oh Lord. Help us to yield to the Holy Spirit. Help us to not give in to the flesh. Help us to let you live your life through us so that the joy and the life you bring can emanate through us. Give us words to speak. 
Help us know when and how to speak up, to testify of you, to share our testimony, to give glory to you. And I pray you'd give us courage to do so. Father, as we think of some of what's been thought of and said, it's a Christian nation, a Christian culture, be it in Great Britain, be it in other parts of Europe, be it in the United States. And we see the secularism and the atheism has devastated and caused so many to leave the faith. And Lord, the vacuum is being filled by things that are not good. Give us a spirit to know how, have the wisdom and know how and what to say and how to speak up and how to be salt and light in our day, we pray. Raise up leaders among us for this, we ask. And we pray all these things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen and amen. Well, we hear from Richard Dawkins. Let's not be cultural Christians. And let's sure not be atheists. Let's be genuine Christians. You want the fruit, you got to have the root. You want the reality, you've got to have. If you want the, if you want the, con, the, the result, you've got to have Jesus. So glad to have you along with us today. If you're new, a special welcome. I hope you will subscribe to our channel, like the video, leave a comment on the way in the, in the comment section before introduce yourself. What do you think? Have we lost our saltiness in the church? Have we Christians become tasteless? Are we standing up? Are we being seen? Are we distinguishable from the world? Do you agree with the idea that you be a cultural Christian and that's good if you don't have real Christian, real believers? What do you think of what Dawkins said? Leave a comment below. I'd love to hear. Until we meet tomorrow, God bless you. I'll look forward to seeing you then. Bye-bye.